Yeah, so I want to build an endpoint with you guys in, in this uh, Angular full stack setup. And when I say endpoint, what, the last, what, what is that actually? What does it mean? Well, we're going to build what we call a REST API or a REST service, if you want to call it that. I want to be able to put in different links here. Let's try and have a look at a few of them. If I put in a link like this, where it says resources, I, if, I, if I don't put anything in the end and I do a GET request, then I get a list of all um, whatever I put in there. So if it, in our case, it's going to be things, so I'll get back all the things. If I put in a put request instead, I'll replace something, I'll update something on the back end. If I do a post request, I, we expect the REST API or the, or the REST service to create something new in there. And if I do a delete, we expect something to be deleted. Now, if I end up adding some kind of ID in the end of this, I'll show you this in a second. So if I add an ID, I expect to ret retrieve, using the REST API, I only retrieve that single ID. So in our case, I would only get one thing instead of all the things. I expect to replace the one thing and I expect to create one, but that's not happening because I wouldn't do a create with a specific ID because I let the, the backend do the create for me. So this one is almost never used. And then the last one is the delete, so I'll delete just one member. This guy will delete the entire collection, right? So we have to try and see if we have thing, uh, a thing like this. And actually, if we write localhost slash API, I'll show you later in the code where we do this, slash things, we'll actually get all the things back available. If you don't know if I'm telling the truth here, if I just do a normal request, I have one called optimize build and deployment ready. And when I do the slash API slash things, you'll actually see that happening right here. Whoa, there we go. Optimize build and deployment ready. So I get those two things back. Now, as I said, if I put in the end of it, this is a get request. So if I put this one in the end of it, I'll actually only get the one thing with that ID. Let's look again here. So that means that the guest that the get request, I can test that right away inside the browser. So that's perfect. I know that now I can get a list of things using my REST API and I can get um, a single thing using my REST API. So that works. But inside this guy, I cannot, I don't have a way for, for it to test if I can actually put things in there and update them or and I, if I can create a new thing using post and if I can uh, delete a thing using the delete request. So we have to use another tool for that. And that's where Postman comes in. So I'm going to Google for Postman. The, and you can also look for Postman slash Chrome if you want to find it. And it's inside the Chrome Web Store. Again, I'm using Chrome and I really encourage you to do the same. So here, I, it, it would say download the app. But in my case, since I already downloaded and installed it, it's pretty much just a single click and that's done. I can now start the app. So I'm going to start Postman. Another thing, if you can't find it anywhere, you can open this guy here and write Postman and it's actually inside because it's actually a desktop app that you have running on your machine. So what is Postman? Over here we have the history of all the calls we made. We can actually make some collection of calls if we want to use them again later. Here we kind of have the place where we can start actually testing our REST API. And we're going to test things. So there's going to be a few steps there on doing that. So what we want to test out first is going to be um, just testing out things if that works. So I'm doing a send and I'll get back my two things. Let's see if we can actually also do a request where we only get back a specific thing and we got that right here. So those are the get requests that I just tested in the browser. 